Hello and welcome back to this damn philatistic crusade. This video is going to be my suggestions for Kino's massive uh, site-wide summer sale, which has over 800 titles included this time around. So there are a mixture of Kino catalog releases, titles they've had out for a while, and uh, quite a number of their new releases, including some 4K titles that are included. And as always, it's always a great idea ordering directly from Kino because their site sales are usually the just about the cheapest you can get their releases for and especially once you hit that $50 free shipping threshold uh, it, it really provides the most significant savings I think uh, f that is available for Kino titles and uh, it's it's a very easy site to order from uh, the problem is of course uh, they don't really have distribution outside North America so unfortunately for those in other regions particularly the UK it's usually a lot more expensive and tricky to get Kino discs so unfortunately this is much more geared towards uh, those of us in the US but if you're already uh, aware of Kino you're probably already Already well aware of their site sales or have ordered from them before so usually they do a massive summer sale like this but this is definitely one of the biggest they have done in terms of the sheer number of titles that they have so in this video I'll be going over uh, discs that I personally own and also some ones that uh, I, I myself would like to pick up this summer uh, and during this sale or titles that I think are important or interesting and as, as I did as I've done with other videos this will always be uh, titles uh, well all of these titles are ones that I think the Kino Lorber is the best edition or uh, is the only worthwhile video edition currently available so basically either it is the best of all different releases or has unique transfer or extras to it that make it special uh, or preferable or it is simply the only blu-ray that is available and it, since Kino does so many titles there is quite a lot of double dipping if you also collect from other labels in other regions some labels will do a special edition sometimes Kino has the better transfer or has more extras or does a special edition so you do have to dig around to make sure you don't accidentally buy the the same film uh, twice or three times over or uh, double dip on extras or things like that and of course Kino doesn't always hang on to licenses for films uh, so there are quite a number of titles in there going out of print sale as well. In fact, there are so many that I feel I probably need to do an entire separate video just for their going out of print sale. So this will be, again, expressly titles in their massive summer sale, which again has over 800 titles in it this time. So to go through these just in a rough order, uh, I guess in a rough alphabetical order, because that's how the sale is organized. So we start with one of the absolute majestic treasures of the adventure serial one of the finest serials ever made the uh, as it credits 4k scan uh, restoration from paramount and republic that is of course 1941's the adventures of captain marvel directed by the legendary team of william whitney with john english this is the first screen adaptation of a comic book character uh, it is still one of the finest comic book adaptations ever made it is one of the great adventure serials if you've never seen a serial before you can start here and be hooked for life it also stands as one of the great action films period uh, since william whitney himself is quite possibly the greatest action director who ever lived uh, inventing quite a lot of the form i'd say he's he's right up there with michael curtiz raul walsh and the, and john Wu among a very very select handful uh, I cannot stress the importance of this serial. Uh, for me personally, it's right up there with the original Flash Gordon serial from Universal as the greatest serial ever made, which speaks volumes. And it still plays today absolutely beautifully. Uh, it has had a number of releases. Like most serials, the quality does always leave a lot to be desired. However, with Captain Marvel, it has been treated better by Republic. So it got their nice Laserdisc release, which I have and is really wonderful. Then it got uh, redone slightly for DVD, which is a solid disc. 
but then seeing it in this new scan is really incredible. And Kino has done a handful of uh, serials from new scans. They also did one of the other great serials, uh, Daredevils of the Red Circle. Unfortunately, that disc is now out of print. Being uh, included in the sale and being under $10 is an absolute steal for the amount of time. And, you know, it clocks in at over 200 minutes as a classic adventure serial. It does have a some nice extras because it actually does give you a booklet, which is rare for Kino releases. Uh, it is on a single Blu-ray disc, so um, personally I would have preferred if it had used two disc for bitrate space, but seeing as this is still a classic serial and it is not widescreen, there is you know, it's it's much easier to do a a four by three presentation with a longer runtime on a single disc than it is a a widescreen title. But uh, that that notwithstanding, it is astounding seeing the new transfer, seeing the serial look this good. Uh, it is not perfect, unfortunately. Uh, you know, because it it wasn't given. You know, when you say restoration in a new scan, you know that makes you think, oh, it's absolutely perfect looking. Uh, this does. Still Still have some occasional bits here and there of, of damage and things and and again it hasn't been given a full overhaul restoration but to be honest I much prefer uh, this you know if, if they weren't going to you know and get again this is paramount seemingly doing this uh, if they weren't going to go for the whole shebang and perfectly restore it from the original negatives I'd much rather have a more hands-off presentation like this from a beautiful new scan uh, I, I would wish more of the classic serials would get this treatment because there are some that are in just deplorable shape on home video, uh, like the classic Zoro's Fighting Legion from Republic and the same directing team. Uh, the one problem with this release and why I, 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 I hate that it, it exists, but I still recommend it as the best release overall. Uh, unfortunately, one of the chapters has an encoding error. So I believe it's chapter six, if I remember correctly. Uh, it, it seems to run at a slightly slower pace and it might have some uh, frame rate issues like, like the, in terms of the encoding, like I think it may repeat some frames. So that that's a really unfortunate part that does mar the presentation. Uh, uh, all the other chapters are fine, and again, this is a lightning leap forward over the Laserdisc and DVD from Republic, but still, it's unfortunate that that happened on that one chapter, because otherwise, this is still a phenomenal release, and I still have to recommend it, especially at the under $10 sale price for being one of the greatest serials ever made. You're also getting a commentary track with a whole host of famous names, from Jerry Beck to even Leonard Maltin and the great Tom Weaver as well. Uh, of course, it's on selected chapters. It's not for the whole serial, but uh, it's amazing to get that sort of extra on a serial release because most serials don't have any extras. They're, they're lucky to even have the trailer that survives. So that is why I think Adventures of Captain Marvel, even with that problem in the one chapter, unfortunately, is an essential Blu-ray release. Uh, I don't see anyone else releasing this anytime soon, unfortunately. And serials are so often overlooked that at least we have one of the crown jewels of the form available in Blu-ray with some extras, this lovely artwork, and it, again, on sale, it's going for under $10, which makes it uh, just about the greatest value in this sale. Uh, it's, again, just unfortunate that that problem happened with the uh, with the one chapter. Uh, again, I don't know if that is just in the Source Master and it was an error by Paramount, uh, or if it happened in the encoding process, but uh, I, I wish that would have been fixed because other, otherwise this is an, an absolutely amazing must-own release. Next is a release I'm looking to get myself, which is the Kino release of Billy Wilder's masterpiece, The Apartment, from 1960. This is one of their combo Blu-ray and 4K releases from the new 4K transfer, and it is a marked improvement visually over the old Arrow release. It's also got a brand new Joseph McBride commentary who just published his great book on Billy Wilder that I've reviewed on this channel, which is a must read. Uh, I really adore his commentary tracks. They're absolutely fantastic and well worth your time. Unfortunately, it doesn't have all of the extras from the excellent Arrow limited release. So uh, if you love the film and you you don't have the arrow or you have the arrow you will have to have a copy of that and then uh, use it with the new Kino release which 
has some nice vintage art and is just another in their uh, new 4K series. And not when it's on sale, uh, it is very much affordable. And thankfully, it's one of the ones that does include a new remastered Blu-ray. For those of us who have not jumped into 4K yet, you're able to future-proof yourself. This, of course, is the Arrow Limited release. So to have all of the extras, you will have to have a copy of the Arrow version. Uh, and again, this uses the master that MGM had at the time. So you will see a visual improvement right off the bat on the new Kino release, even if you're just looking at the 1080p disc. Uh, the one problem is is in the audio realm. I've already read reports of this, so uh, I can talk about this even though I don't have the new disc yet. Uh, MGM did apply a lot of heavy noise reduction to the various releases. The DVD sounded pretty crappy. Uh, then unfortunately that carried over in various ways, so the Arrow release doesn't sound very good, and the new Kino release seemingly uses what I think is the best sounding version, and again, this is just what I've heard from other people. Um, I think the old Letterbox Laserdisc is the best sounding version because it doesn't have a uh, heavy usage of noise reduction applied to it. But uh, from what I've heard others report, it seems like somehow that they may have used that audio or a non-noise reduced source this time, and then somebody did some work on their own. So unfortunately, it doesn't sound as good as the laser disc still. So I'm going to buy a copy anyway because I want to hear the new commentary and the transfer is improved over the arrow, but it just makes another of the classic masterpiece films that you do kind of have to mix and match between several different releases to have uh, the best transfer specs and to have all of the various extras. Next is a really fantastic release that uh, fixes a gigantic problem with the previous Blu-ray we all went out and bought like silly people uh, and of course are now stuck with. Uh, this is their reissue of the Big Country, the masterpiece western directed by William Wyler with a fantastic cast. This is one of the great truly classic westerns uh doesn't get talked about enough but this takes the mgm master and corrects the terrible stretching problem the mgm blu-ray had it was basically stretched and distorted uh, as if somebody thought it was a different aspect ratio and so when you looked at that disc it, it was like the uh the old cinemascope problems on steroids in terms of early cinemascope films having stretching in the cinemascope mumps and things like that um, so that was entirely a problem in the video realm so kino licensed the film and was going to put it out and then had to do some work to fix that problem so it took a while to get this disc but they did make it one of their special editions so it has lovely art but it also has reversible art as well on the interior then it also has a pretty substantial supplemental feature section, including an audio commentary. So again, this is one of those titles that is well worth your money if you're looking for the titles that have good AV specs and have a an actual extra features section because the vast majority of Kino catalog releases are you know older video masters usually or pre-existing ones and they usually only have the trailer at most so this is one of their more substantial ones uh, again this is a, a really great release it fixes the terrible problem of the old MGM disc so now you can very much get rid of that one somehow or throw it away but unfortunately it doesn't have all of the extras from the original laserdisc release and i do think the old laserdisc release does still sound slightly better than all the other releases so i do think this release sounds good i think it is the best version overall i just wish it had everything and sounded as good as the ld release so uh for for most people this will suffice and it is a great release of the film and especially at its sale price it is a must-own title and it fixes a gigantic glaring problem that affected the terrible mgm blu-ray and unfortunately that that it was not isolated to just this film that was something MGM had a problem with for a while so there are a number of MGM films that are unfortunately stuck that way uh, I believe one of the uh, that well there was a little bit of it on the original Pink Panther film uh, and then uh, there was also I believe it happened on one of the Vincent Price Dr. Goldfoot films and some other Price AIP films so again for, for a little while there when MGM was making Masters uh, that happened unfortunately for, to a number of titles but thankfully 
thankfully, this classic Western has finally been addressed and that problem has been fixed. So I can hardly recommend this. Next is a true classic that uh, did not have a lot of video releases and is very important for a lot of people's careers. That is the 1938 classic Bluebeard's Eighth Wife, directed by Ernst Lubitsch, written by the legendary team of Charles Brackett and Billy Wilder. This is really the film that brought them and Lubitsch together. Lubitsch was the great hero of Billy Wilder, along with many other people. And of course, after this film and uh, it having both positives and minuses and everybody sort of considering it not quite a misfire, but it, it, it was sort of starting them on the path to what they achieved the very next year with the classic Ninochka. So you wouldn't have that film without this one. And I really do like that this film does get into darker territory, and it does have one of the all-time great, uh, what they term the meat cutes, uh, especially something you had in classic screwball and romantic comedies where the male and female lead have to meet somehow, and you have to come up with a cute gag. Uh, this this it may be the most famous or the most talked about in the critical realm, and it is one of the absolute best examples of that form, where you have the uh, the whole gag of the having to buy a set of pajamas, but only wanting one half, the top or the bottom, and then the other person coming up and wanting only the other half you don't want, thus insinuating that Somebody will be, of course, naked from the waist down, and the other will be naked from the waist up. So there is, of course, uh, a nice, cynically funny undercurrent gag that's that, that's part of the classic Lubitsch touch. It is one of the all-time great meet cutes, and it is it is a really great film that I think is very much underrated. Uh, this is a uh, I, I'm not sure when this transfer was made, but it is much better than uh, the last time I saw it, which I believe was on TCM and mastered from the, what I think this was in one of those random Universal Vault DVD sets or something. But anyway, this is uh, a pretty nice edition. It has a Cat Ellinger commentary plus the original trailer, so it does actually have some legitimate extras. So it, again, if you're looking for titles that have something other than just movie only, uh, this is a great way to go, and this is the best release of the film that has ever been on a video to my knowledge so uh, this is another kino release where it really is the one to go for next is one of the truly classic westerns extraordinarily important that uh, is 1950s broken arrow directed by delmer dave starring jimmy stewart this is really the 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 film that became a landmark of sorts of treating native american characters in a western with dignity and grace and actually treating them as if they were real people and not caricatures or simply the unseen villains of the piece. Jeff Chandler playing Cochise in this film is, again, it's really a landmark moment for the treatment of Native American characters in motion pictures, especially in westerns. It's photographed in color, and it has a very striking look to it because it is still 1950 when most westerns were in black and white and it does have some of the grittiness that was starting to emerge and would come to full force with Stewart in the very same year in his first uh, western with Anthony Mann the masterpiece Winchester 73 now this film is nowhere near as gritty and dark and psychologically motivated as that film and the rest of the psychological westerns that he and Mann would go on to make but you do sort of see the formulation of that and pretty early into the film simply because Stewart's character is even a, a somewhat sympathetic towards the Native Americans that he goes into a town and they pretty much string him up and are about to lynch him <laughs> before somebody steps in. And, and when I say about to, I mean, they literally get the noose around his neck. So, I mean, the, 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 the cover alone tells you, you know, there is definite grit and darkness to this story. But it is still, of course, a 1950 Western, so it does follow some conventional standards at the time. But it is a really groundbreaking film for the treatment of Native Americans with an actual sense of dignity and honor and not being simple caricatures. So, you know, it, it, it does 
so much and with with limited means and and being a 1950 western so it, it should be looked at for the important groundbreaking film that it is and you'll get the benefit again of it being a technicolor western at this time now this has had a variety of looks on home video uh, the dvd was a cleanup attempt but this was a new 2k restoration that was done which has much better uh, color registration and just has a better overall presentation of the color so if you've never seen any any of the Blu-ray releases of this film from this 2K scan. This will be a real eye-opener if you're used to how it's looked all the years on VHS and DVD and television broadcasts. Um, this has been released by a number of different European labels, and it seems different discs have different masterings in terms of the contrast and stuff, but they are all coming from the same 2K scan. So I think with really any of the versions you're you're doing pretty good unfortunately this does not have any extras i wish it had a, a commentary or something for as important of a western as this is but still this is getting the new 2k scan and much better presentation than the dvd in print it's very affordable and i do love the cover art choice that does get across some of the internal story darkness so this is one of the classic westerns and and is a must see simply for its uh, historical status for breaking through a number of barriers and setting the stage for the psychological westerns of the 50s. Another release that I'm actually looking forward to is uh, the Blu-ray release the Kino did of Chandu the Magician, which is a really wonderful and striking adventure sort of horror film and also uh, it is very much uh, like if you designed a serial but you condensed it down into a single feature film and of course the the chandu character was later made into a serial this stars Bailey Lugosi as the villain of the piece, and he has an absolute field day. It is an absolute must-watch for Lugosi fans. Uh, it was photographed by James Wong Howe. It has incredible visuals and some actually some rather impressive uh, special effects work and some opticals and some model shots. So uh, even though it is still an early talkie, it is it has fantastic atmosphere, and you re you but you have to see it for Lugosi's performance as the villain. Um, and it's ironic because when they later made it into a serial, uh, Lugosi actually wound up playing the, the heroic role. So he got to play it basically in, in on both sides. But uh, this was restored by Fox for their uh, classic horror box set. I believe it was the volume two, which I have. And I was just uh, always wanting to get to the Blu-ray, which Kino did, which is basically just a 1080p upgrade of the DVD. Uh, it carries over the same wonderful commentary that was on Fox's DVD. And I, I do highly recommend it for Lugosi fans. It's a wonderful adventure film. And it has that sort of classic globetrotting pulp adventure feel it has the it's all about the exotic um you know the, the, you get the idea of the the mysteries of the other worlds and the the chandu character himself as a magician and can sort of project himself into people's minds so there is a, a little bit of that classic pulp mysticism mixed in as well with some doses of the supernatural but uh, again it is it is a really is surprisingly effective film with some in a very in rather intricate for the time special effects usage and again it has the adventure flavor of a classic serial with Lugosi having an absolute field day so uh, if you're a Lugosi fan it's a must watch uh, if you're a fan of classic adventure films or classic horror films I can't recommend it highly enough uh, there is some classic sci-fi mixed in as well due to the, the Lugosi character having this this grand weapon of sorts to threaten the world with so uh, it, it's just a wonderful experience and it's, it's also quite short so you know it is definitely worth your time and uh, also worth a second watch with the excellent commentary. Next is a really great bargain because Kino has gotten the rights and done a reissue of the classic Dr. Fives films so they have done a double feature release of the classic Vincent Price starring the abominable Dr. Dr. Fives from 1971, and its follow-up sequel, Dr. Fives Rises Again from 1972. Now, these are the same MGM masters like all of the other uh, Vincent Price, Roger Corman, AIP classic titles, uh, so they have been released by Shout Factory, then Arrow did versions that had better encodings and had their own unique extras. Um, I have the Arrow disc for all, most of those, so I have the Arrow Blu-rays for both Fives films, but Kino has done a very affordable uh, double feature reissue 
issue. They do have some new exclusive extras. I think it's a commentary that is exclusive to these. So you are getting uh, some bonuses for your money, but again, if you want absolutely everything, you will also have to get a copy of the Arrow versions for completion's sake. But in the sale, it's I think it's only $12.99, so it's a fantastic deal. And I think that the first releases are coming with slipcovers, so if you're a big slipcover fan, you get that as well. So it's a definitely one of the better bargains of the sale since it's two classic Vincent Price films for $12.99. Next is their uh, new release of the, it's called the Ekerji Ulmer triple feature of science fiction films mostly. Uh, these are really interesting. Ulmer was a, a really fantastic genius talent that uh, unfortunately found himself stuck at Poverty Row, but still managed to make absolute classics before and during that time. He started working under the greats of the German cinema, then immigrated over in into the U.S. like the rest of them. Uh, he wound up making the horror classic The Black Cat for Universal in 1934. Uh, he didn't get on very well, shall we say, with people at Universal for different reasons, and so essentially kind of got blackballed a bit and wound up working in, on the Poverty Road side of things at various studios like Monogram. So his most famous film is 1945's Detour, which is one of the darkest and most scathing of all film noirs, and in spite of its cheap budget is one you will never forget simply for its impact and visuals alone uh, that was finally restored in 4k and is on a criterion blu-ray but he made other really striking films i think his other great film is included in this set which is the science fiction classic the man from planet x which is an astoundingly effective film that was made for practically no money on leftover sets uh, on an extremely short schedule and is basically, you know, if you wanted to describe the plot, essentially there's a mysterious ship that crash lands and there's an alien sort of presence that people can't figure out exactly what he's up to. But the sense of foreboding, the mood, and the, the fact that the, the shots are frequently at night on a, on a misty uh, backdrop, and it just it, it really puts you in the mood and feel of that place and time. It is extraordinarily effective and is one of the most admirable uh, low-budget films I think you can possibly see. I think it is a textbook for how you can make something great out of seemingly nothing. And it's also one of those films that leaves uh, interpretation up to the audience because the ending can be read in at least two different ways, uh, either a lighter or a darker way. It, it, and it definitely stays with you. So it is one of the absolute great 1950s science fiction classics. Uh, it was released by Shout Factory on Blu-ray that went out of print and then Kino has picked up the rights reissued it here uh, carries over the same commentary but it's also bundled in with two other films that are very interesting I've, I've always read about them I just haven't seen them yet so uh, for the sale price which I think is $19.99 uh, you're getting three Edgar G. Ulmer titles with commentaries new transfers I think they're all on the same disc but these films have very short run times so there shouldn't be any issues in terms of uh, you know not being enough space for three, you know, very, very short B films. But it's really wonderful seeing these get proper respect on home video because Ulmer really was a great talent. It was a shame that he wound up uh, do, spending most of his career at Poverty Row Studios, but he did still make some absolute classics. Among them, I think the, the standouts are Detour and uh, The Man from Planet X, which I can't recommend highly enough for science fiction fans. Next are the Kino releases of classic Clint East with starring vehicles. These were all licensed and mostly have new transfers, so they are uh, either slight updatings or complete updatings of the previous Universal Blu-rays. Uh, these run the gamut from High Plains Drifter to Joe Kidd to the classic uh, classics directed by Don Siegel like Coogan's Bluff or The Beguiled. Uh, also, of course, play Misty for Me. So it's a whole variety of the some of the most famous Clint Eastwood films. The Iger Sanction is another one. Uh, they did come with slipcovers for the first printing, so they have nice original art and slipcovers covers. Again, once those sell out, I, I don't know um, if they're being 
still sold if Kino still has the slip covers for these releases. But with them being on sale, uh, it really makes them more enticing, especially for those of us like me. I bought the, I actually have the Eastwood box set, the UK sort of shoebox design. So I have all of these on Blu-ray already, but uh, I have been thinking about picking up some of these because they do have improved transfers. I think probably the biggest improvement is going to be Two Mules for Sister Sarah, which had uh, a, a previous Universal Blu-ray with a lot of DNR and just yuckiness and this is getting away from that with some extras and such so I think that's probably going to be the first one I look at picking up but again with them all on sale they're all like $9.99 now or I think some are one or two are a little bit less so they are very enticing and again they are upgrades over the previous Universal Blu-rays. Next is Kubrick's Fear and Desire. This is the restoration of Kubrick's first feature which he tried to suppress for <laughs> the rest of his career because he was embarrassed by it pretty much. Um, so it was very hard to see. You had to l literally look at bootlegs or just terrible copies that were floating around. Then we got this Library of Congress backed restoration, which Kino released on Blu-ray, and then I believe Eureka released a Blu-ray in the UK, but that's out of print now. Uh, so this is still the only in-print version of the, in the world. It is usually a little bit pricey, so that's why it's great to be included in the sale. Also, very importantly, it includes Kubrick's uh, short film, The Seafarers, which uh, isn't often talked about or discussed, but it is one of the other Kubrick-directed pieces of film that you need to see if you're a Kubrick fanatic, and it itself was very rare and hard to come by, so it's amazing to have it in HD. Uh, you know, it's, it's like his shorts that he did uh, that are also very important, like Flying Padre, for example. So it's fantastic to have that on here. So essentially, you're getting... I mean, The Seafarers really isn't a feature, but it's basically two Kubrick titles for the price of one from a new restoration with the Library of Congress. You get this rather nice and striking art, and then it's also got some interior art as well. This is a very important film, even though it is very rough and unpolished in areas, uh, because if you want to understand Kubrick's career and how and where he came from, really, it is truly important to look at Fear and Desire, and I'm just amazed that there is an actual physical disc release and some sort of restoration on this because I thought it would never happen. Now, Kino has talked at, that uh, sort of mentioned they might be interested in doing a 4K release of Fear and Desire since they just did uh, both uh, Killer's Kiss and The Killing in 4K. Uh, so this may get upgraded at some point, but until then, uh, this is still the best and really only release there is since the UK version is out of print and very expensive. And again, this is a more pricey title from Kino, so it being in the sale, you're getting a, a much more significant saving. Next, of course, if you're interested in picking these up, the entirety of of Kino's 4K Blu-ray release of the Classic Dollars trilogy of Sergio Leone films is on sale and at significant savings. So you can actually pick up the whole trilogy of Kino releases for far less than the list price. Of course, I'm pretty sure they've sold out of all the slip covers. Of course, the GPU slip covers went like hot cakes and people still pay high dollar amounts trying to get those. So if you're a slip cover fan, I don't think they will still have any left, but you never know, you might get lucky and get uh, one or both for the first two films. But if you're interested in these, they are selling for a significant savings right now. So now will be the time to pick these up if you're interested in them. Kino also has a distribution deal with the Cohen Media Group. So the usually rather pricey Cohen titles are sometimes included in the sale. So this time around, we have a couple of those. So Cohen's various volume releases of classic Buster Keaton masterpieces are included, and they're actually significantly inexpensive at about $9.99 each. Uh, these are all pretty much two feature sets, so with icon each one has two iconic Buster Keaton masterpieces. Uh, they don't really have all of the extensive features that the uh, Eureka Masters of Cinema Blu-rays do in the UK, and they do have their own unique transfers, so if you are a Keaton fan or fanatic, you're probably already aware that if you want everything and you want the absolute best transfers of each and every film, you do kind of have to buy a bunch of different releases to have absolutely everything but the uh, Cohen releases for the most part are excellent and even though they don't really have extra features all that much uh, they are a, a fantastic way to start looking at Keaton's work and at $9.99 a pop 
uh, very, very much affordable and at a significant savings over their list price. Next is another expensive Cohen title. That is the Fritz Lang film Hangman Also Die, which is a great classic. And this is actually from a new restoration, and it has a significant extra features package. This is the uh, full-length restored version of the film. So this is a BFI restoration. It is including footage that was removed from previous versions, and it has a whole supplemental section, which is very rare for a Cohen title title. So you're getting a new 30 minutes critical interview, you're getting an illustrated essay, plus a brand new commentary, and a vintage 1940s German newsreel, plus restoration comparison, and then the brand new restoration trailer. So this is one of the best Cohen titles you can pick up in terms of getting the most bang for your buck, and it is a very, very underrated Fritz Lang title. I mean, of course, Fritz Lang <laughs> always made truly interesting and groundbreaking films. I don't think he could be really boring if he tried, uh, but this, I think, if you're looking at Cohen titles to pick up, I think this is an excellent choice, and again, uncommon for Cohen releases, this actually has a significant special features section. Also, Kino has done some new releases or newer releases of restored early Cary Grant titles from the Universal Library. So they've done a few of the earlier Cary Grant vehicles before he was really a star and they are very much important for Cary Grant fans trying to understand how the Grant persona developed and they're fascinating to look at. Uh, so these are of course films like The Eagle and the Hawk, uh, The Devil in the Deep, and, and others like that. Uh, so uh, several of these are included in the sale at a significant savings. Um, I, I don't know if anybody's going to do a, a sort of like early Cary Grant box sets like what happened with the Universal Vault DVD collections, but uh, the, it's just great to see these actually getting cleaned up and released on Blu-ray and again at a pretty significant savings in the sale. Next is another Cohen title that is their release of the restoration of Hitchcock's Jamaica Inn from 1939. This was the last film that Hitchcock made in England uh, with Charles Lawton and Mar the great Maureen O'Hara. Uh, it is a, a really interesting film. It's a period piece and it famously doesn't have the greatest reputation. Uh, it was missing a giant chunk of the feature. Most older public domain releases that I grew up with, because that was the only way you could see the film, were missing anywhere between 20 and 40 minutes, and it made the film play very badly. Uh, plus, the transfers were horrendous, so when this got restored and released on Blu-ray, it was really a sight to behold. Um, unfortunately, the Cohen Blu-ray went out of print for a while, and so I wound up getting the uh, Eureka Masters of Cinema release from the same restoration. So you can get either that or the new the Cohen release, which is now back in print, thankfully. Uh, but here in the sale, it is very inexpensive and even though it is a very lowly regarded Hitchcock title it's still incredibly important and it was the last film that Hitchcock made in his British period so he'd already made his Selznick deal at this point and even though he thought the film kind of got away from him and and that it was a bit messy and didn't quite work it's still a fascinating must-see film for Hitchcock scholars and it's available in this Cohen release for a very significant savings also in the sale are the new Universal restorations of various W.C. Fields classics. So uh, again, I don't know if anybody's going to do a box set of these, but so far, Kino has been the only one who has released these new restorations. They're each in lovely individual releases with original poster art, uh, including classics like The Bank Dick. So uh, all Fields fans must already be swarming all over these. They are the best releases to date of these classics, and in the sale, even though they're being sold individually, they are at a significant and and very enticing savings. So uh, this would definitely be the the, the releases to go for uh, unless somebody announces, like, say, a, a complete Fields at Universal box set. So uh, until that point, these are really, really wonderful and, of course, much cheaper if you get them during the sale. Next is another title from the Universal Library. It doesn't really have previous video releases, so this getting a new scan, restoration, and Blu-ray release was enormous news. So as a James Whale fanatic, I was so excited for the release of The Kiss Before the Mirror, one of his non-horror and less famous universal vehicles, but still made when Whale was at his full creative powers and had the backing of the studio behind him. Whale was really one of the definitive 
d- great directors, and if anybody ever deserved the term of auteur, it obviously has to be James Whale in that very short list because there was not one aspect of a film that he made that did not have his personal stamp on it or his input or his creativity placed in it. So if you only know Whale for his absolutely legendary work in the classic horror realm uh, it will be a fantastic and wonderful surprise seeing his other films that still have his trademark wit Uh, this is from a new 2k scan and restoration it includes the original trailer and it has a brand new commentary so it is a very nice enticing release it doesn't often go on sale so since it's included here i do highly recommend it since it's New work, has a commentary, uh, it is a more expensive title usually, and it really doesn't have any other video releases, so this is a a must-own Kino Blu-ray title. Next, Kino released a Blu-ray of the classic Lonely Are the Brave from 1962, written by Dalton Trumbo and starring Kirk Douglas in one of his best roles. Uh, This is one of the truly great Uh, what you would call modern day westerns Uh, it really prefaces a lot of what what I think what turns up in in First Blood the first Rambo film uh, is very much about one man in the rugged landscape versus the entirety of human society Uh, and when you see this it very (laughs) it has a lot of First Blood influence I think Uh, beautifully shot in widescreen black and white so the the stark visuals really fit the story one Wonderfully. It's one of those films you don't forget, and it really defies genre classification. It's a truly special experience, and unfortunately, it is using an older Universal Master. It hasn't been fully restored, um, but at least this is getting the film out on Blu-ray. Uh, it doesn't really have any extras, so it's just film only, but it's such a special truly wonderful film experience that I would recommend to anyone that if you're looking for a great classic in this sale, Lonely Are the Brave is a perfect choice even though it is not a new scan or restoration and it's just an older video master. So um, you know, it's basically an HD upgrade of, of the old DVD in ways, but uh, still it's such a classic and they're, the only Blu-ray releases are like this, so there's like I think a German release that's the same thing. It's the old Video Master in HD. Um, so until somebody does a new scan and a true special edition, uh, the the Kino is the way to go for the Blu-ray release, and you can get it here in the sale. Next is the best version on disc of one of the true cinema classics. That is the 1945 Billy Wilder directed masterpiece, The Lost Weekend, which won the Oscar for Ray Milland. This is still to date the great picture about alcoholism there are other great pictures about alcoholism but this is the standout and this is from a brand new 4k scan and is by far and away the best video presentation of the film on disc uh eureka did a pretty impressive blu-ray in the uk before this but it was using an older video master so this is one where the kino vaults ahead because it has the new 4k master it's also got a brand new joseph mcbride audio commentary which is worth its weight in gold plus the uh uh, the radio version and a trailers from hell piece along with the trailer. So um, the, the Eureka Blu-ray has that wonderful feature length Wilder interview documentary, which is a must, but uh, the Kino has the much improved video in terms of being from the 4k master and the must listen McBride commentary. So this is a no brainer in the sale. Um, they haven't said it about anything about reissuing this film on 4K, but it, they definitely could. Um, but until then, this is still another of the absolute must-own Kino Blu-ray titles of one of the truly classic, iconic films. Next is one of the Hitchcock titles they've released from Hitchcock's British period. That's 1930s Murder. Uh, this is a wonderful release, easily the best release that the film has ever gotten, and the, the British films usually got terrible treatment on home video and here in the states were mostly released in these crappy public domain releases so uh that this this is a film that I, I used to see in the absolute worst quality uh and what's amazing about this is it actually includes the rare alternate german version so this film was shot twice and hitchcock directed both the english language and german language versions of the film so it's like blackmail in that way that there are two distinct versions of the film, each with their own artistic and historical importance. And being a Hitchcock scholar and fanatic, 
every Hitchcock title is important. So don't let the fact that it's an early talkie and has a German version and, and isn't well talked about or very well known discourage you from looking at this. Now, this was released at the same time as their blackmail release, which did have some aspect ratio issues, unfortunately. Uh, that doesn't affect this, thankfully. Um, but the German version is is only in so-so quality. So um, it was previously released, I think, on a... Um, actually, I think it was on a German DVD. It was either a German, European, or UK DVD. So it's, it's still sort of like a rough equivalent to that DVD release. I think the, the DVD may be just slightly better quality than the... Uh, for the German version, mind you, uh, compared to this version. Um, but at least this is finally getting the German version on a U.S. release, in addition to the fully restored version of the primary English language version. And this was handled by uh, Studio Canal, who holds the rights to this. So for the primary feature and the fact that this has an audio commentary, plus audio selections from the iconic Hitchcock Truffaut interviews, and an alternate ending, plus an introduction... It is a really wonderful release that's worth your time. You're getting a lot of additional content for your money, and especially at the sale price, it's really a no-brainer. Um, this is one of the Kino Hitchcock titles I can really recommend because it doesn't have any sort of issues, and it is from a new restoration. So this, like all Hitchcock titles, is important, but I always feel I have to champion or, or sort of very much uh, get people more interested in the lesser known and regarded films. So I start to stick up for them a lot more than the most famous ones that everybody talks about because contrary to popular belief, Hitchcock made more than five or 10 famous American films. <laughs> he has a whole other realm to his career in the British period that deserves and needs to be uh, delved into more, which you can do on this Kino release of Murder. Next is the Kino release of the 1957 Western Night Passage. This is truly important because this was made right after the partnership between Jimmy Stewart and Anthony Mann broke up, and this was to have been the film they had they would have made together after The Man from Laramie. So it has some of the darkness and some of the psychological grit of a Anthony Mann Western, but it very much is also a studio picture. It co-stars Audie Murphy, who gives a pretty great performance it has again some of that psychological grit but it is unfortunate that man and Stewart sort of had a falling out and man didn't stay on because the lighter elements and the way the film sort of meanders a little bit definitely holds it back from being a classic western but this is also important because this was the first film to be photographed in the then new Technorama process. So it has an incredible widescreen image with a great deal of clarity. And this is from a new transfer, which will really blow you away if you're just used to the old DVD or TV airing. So um, it's it's a wonderful disc. It has a new Toby Roan audio commentary plus the trailer. So it is a nice disc to pick up during the sale. It is very inexpensive. And uh, again, this is the best release available. Uh, unfortunately, though, the transfer does seem to have just the teensiest bit of DNR application, which seems to be something Universal did, not and obviously not Kino. Um, that does hold it back a little bit, but still, the night and day improvement over the old DVD is really worth your time. And it's a must for Stuart fans and even Anthony Mann fans, because you can recognize some sort of leftovers of of what Anthony Mann probably would would have done so you can sort of imagine the film that could have been uh, plus if you're an accordion fan you get to see Jimmy Stewart play his favorite accordion in the film so um, you get that bonus too <laughs> Next is uh, one where the Kino release really is the best version that's available. This is the 1955 absolute science fiction horror classic masterpiece directed by Val Guest and the film that truly put Hammer Films on the map, making their classic horror film cycles possible. That is, of course, the Quatermass Experiment, spelled with the X to signify the X, rate, the X certificate rating in the UK. Uh, this based on the classic and very famous groundbreaking Nigel Neal BBC television serial. The film is quite different. It is a harder film with a completely different rendering of the Quatermass character. Uh, even though it's black and white and made on a low budget, Val Guest decided to shoot it in a very docudrama, almost newsreel type fashion that really heightens the tension, the drama, it makes it feel extraordinarily realistic, 
And this was hugely influential on many people, including John Carpenter, who saw it as a young child and actually gives an on-camera interview talking about the film's impact. Uh, this has a really significant extra section. In addition to the Carpenter interview, there are multiple featurettes, uh, an interview with Val Guest, and a commentary with Guest and uh, Marcus Hearn, the great Hammer historian, plus the trailers from Hell Peace, the original trailer, and the U.S. version of the opening titles, because here in the U.S. it had a different edit and a different title. This is still a, one of the most effective and long-lasting films you can see of the classic 50s sci-fi horror genre. And again, this could be technically considered the first Hammer Horror film. Uh, without this film, we would not have Hammer Horror. There would be no Curse of Frankenstein if it weren't for the Quatermass Experiment. Uh, and again, this film is so astounding and so beautifully made that it, it hasn't dated. I mean, it still holds up. Um, I've shown this to a great number of people, and they were just bl as blown away by it as I was the first time. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't have a lot of great video releases. A lot of them weren't even widescreen, so this does fix that finally. Uh, it has been cleaned up some. It is widescreen. It has lossless original mono and the lovely extras package, so this, I think, makes it easily the definitive release of the film to date on home video. It's one of the must-own Kino titles, absolutely. Um, and and it's such a classic that I, I, I hope more people decide to pick it up during the sale and finally see it because it deserves to be talked about much, much more. It's one of those that you see it and it will just absolutely bowl you over. Um, and it is it is matched and I think even, um, even bettered by its uh, very underrated sequel, Quatermass 2, from... Uh, again, Hammer and Val Guest, and they basically rolled into the second film, uh, which also was a much harder and darker version of a Nigel Neal BBC serial for television. Uh, so if you'd ever do a double feature of Quatermass Experiment and Quatermass 2, it's a fantastic double feature. Uh, both are among the absolute greatest science fiction horror films you will ever ever see. They have not dated. They haven't lost any of their potency. So this picture, it's part mystery, it's part science fiction, it's definitely part horror, but it's also human interest because the the extraordinarily emotionally taxing and painful uh, thing that happens to the poor lone surviving astronaut of the mission uh, headed by the Professor Quatermass character. Uh, it, it is just a truly outstanding film that will absolutely bowl you over and the Kino release is the best version to date on home video. Next Kino has done a release of the really hidden 80s gem Runaway Train which was originally uh, scripted by, partially by Kurosawa for Kurosawa to make into a film. Uh, it didn't happen and eventually turned up in this canon release in the mid-1980s. Uh, it's a fantastic film with great intensity. Uh, it really has a dark grittiness to it throughout and makes many unexpected turns. So um, it is one of the very, very small handful of truly great, well-made films that Canon made. So it's it's right up there as, as I think, uh, in the three best Canon films of them all. Uh, again, it's admittedly a very short list, but in terms of not being schlocky or silly or goofy or low budget or just plain bad uh, you know you have Barfly you have Runaway Train and I think the best film canon ever made which was Frankenheimer's Masterpiece 52 Pickup um, but this new release of Runaway Train is apparently from a new master so it does have improved video quality over the previous Arrow UK Blu-ray I think it does have a commentary as well and I think the original release came with a slip cover again I don't know if they still have that or not um, but it is I think one of the most underrated films of the 80s it is well worth your time it doesn't really get talked about but it's one of those absolute hidden gems that you just can't believe it when you see it for the first time that you've never really heard about it before next is the kino release of a universal presentation of one of the stuart anthony mann films that is not a western but has again some of that rich psychological depth of their 50s westerns that's of course thunder bay with lovely original artwork 
Again, this is one of their non-Westerns, but it still has great importance as I think uh, they were just about the greatest actor-director partnership the screen has ever seen. This has a new Toby Rowan audio commentary, and it is in the 185 ratio. This film was released at the very dawn of widescreen, and so it was one of those where it, it's still debated on whether it was composed for widescreen or not. Older releases had it in 133, and it seems it was shot for 133, uh, but it was shown in theaters in widescreen, because by the time it came out, widescreen was the end thing. Now, this film also was notable for having a very early form of a multi-channel stereo soundtrack, basically a sort of three-channel left-center-right soundtrack uh, that was on the DVD. It, it is very minor in terms of you just have some occasional dialogue panning or sound panning across the, the front three channels. Um, that is sort of replicated here as well. Um, it would be great to one day have this released with both that and the original mono version and both the widescreen and an Academy Ratio presentation, but it doesn't, as a film, it doesn't have that sort of reputation that would give it the special edition treatment per se, but still, it would be great to see that at some point, but until then, this is still the most impressive release the film has got, plus it has now uh, the added benefit of being in HD and a new transfer and having an audio commentary. Next is Kino's release of the Masterpiece Touch of Evil, again, another of their 4K releases at a significant savings this time around, uh, but unfortunately, even though it includes the multiple cuts because of that they have split up the blu-ray into a separate release so if you want the new remastered blu-ray of the new presentation of the three cuts of the film plus the handful of new extras that is a separate release so they are not bundled together um, so if you're not 4k uh, ready yet you will have to buy the blu-ray release and then buy the 4k later this is another universal brand new 4K restoration, uh, and they have allowed Kino to release it, and it is at a significant savings now, which I hope to pick up in the sale myself. Um, and the only thing I will mention is I have seen some complaints, because apparently on the releases, since it's a three-disc affair, they have used a sort of stacking disc hub, so you will have to be careful, uh, especially on the 4K release, because two of the discs are on a single hub stacked together. Uh, but again, that is simply because it is trying to accommodate uh, a three disc release which is very uncommon for Kino usually there are only one or two discs uh, but aside from that uh, this is a truly important release for this year and uh, it's at a significant savings in the sale. Next is a disc I just recently reviewed on this channel it's at a significant savings and I think that helps because unfortunately the transfer is a very old master with issues of its own but the fact that this has some great new extras I think makes it the best release of available in the world, as of course for the Robert Aldrich directed classic Ozana's Raid, which has never gotten the reputation or discussion it deserves. It is a brutal, dark film that, uh, as I said in my review, which you can look at on this channel for more information about this title, I think it is probably the most honest depiction of uh, the relations and the breakdown in relations between the U.S. cavalry forces, the white settlers, and the Native Americans in the West. So it is a scathing, brutal, dark film. It is a must-watch, and even though the transfer is very disappointing because it is a super old master, um, it's still fantastic because you're finally getting the film in widescreen because that was... Uh, something we had to deal with because the laser disc and the finally the DVD came out and those were both uh, opened up and not widescreen and didn't look all that great. So even though it's it's unfortunately a crappy older master, it is at least in widescreen and in HD with lossless original audio, a great new audio commentary, a great new interview piece, and uh, a nice trailers from hell piece. So I think that's really uh, plus it being on sale for an inexpensive price. At least the film is out there in print now, and you can see it in widescreen with some great new extras. I can't recommend this highly enough, and again, for more information, you can look at my review on this channel. Another disc that I reviewed on this channel that's in the sale that I highly recommend is the release of Aldrich's 1954 classic western Vera Cruz with the lovely uh, vintage artwork. Again, this is the uh, original pressing with the slipcover. I don't know if they still have the slipcover or not, but this is a vast improvement over the pretty deficient looking MGM Blu-ray that itself was out of print 
It has a new Alex Cox commentary. It is by far and away the best video presentation of the film ever. Uh, the audio is pretty good, but again, the audio track itself, the source is pretty compromised. And I do think, even though it's super noisy, I think the old Laserdisc release does actually sound a, a little bit better. But until this film gets a original camera negative full 4K restoration overhaul in both picture and a full audio restoration, I think this is easily the best you can do for the film in terms of picture, and the sound is pretty solid, and it has some nice extras, and it wipes the floor with the old, super expensive, out-of-print MGM Blu-ray that did not look very good. Again, for more information about this, I did a review on this channel. This is one of the landmark westerns. This is really the film that is truly, I think, the first film to have that sort of European or Italian Western flavor. It was an enormous influence on both Sergio Leone and Sam Peckinpah. You will see elements of their films throughout watching this film, Vera Cruz. It is a truly groundbreaking, dark, gritty, cynical, wonderfully violent and fun Western shot entirely on location in Mexico and was the first film to utilize the then new Super Scope process, which is reflected much better on this release than the older MGM and Blu-ray, which had some severe cropping issues as well, and it is on a significant discount during the sale, so I highly recommend picking it up. Then they've also got the classic Fritz Lang-directed Western Western Union included in the sale, which is usually a more expensive kino title, and that's, that's a film that deserves a, a better look at, uh, and of course I think anything Fritz Lang-directed is worth anybody's time. Uh, I am looking forward to picking up that one myself. It's one that's been on my kino wish list for quite some time time, and it doesn't go on sale quite often like a lot of these other titles. And then lastly, to close out, I wanted to talk about two classic, lesser known, and much harder and more obscure, uh, well, I should say much harder to find and more obscure universal horror classics. So Kino recently, or rather recently, did uh, two releases, both of 1933's Secret of the Blue Room, which is a, a very well-loved among classic horror enthusiast film from Universal's period uh, of classic horror films, but has not gotten many video releases. It was very hard to come by and see. Uh, this is from a newer Universal Preservation source, so this is far better than the MOD DVD they had out a number of years ago that itself was very expensive. Plus, it has a new audio commentary and has a trailer gallery, so... That, combined with lovely art and the very inexpensive price of the sale, makes it a must for classic horror fans. And it, th this really is a nice little underrated gem. It sort of is more of a sort of locked room mystery, it has very much Cat in the Canary vibes, I, I think you could say. Uh, so if you see this and you're expecting an out-and-out -out horror film, you might be slightly disappointed, but it is one of their more mystery-influenced films made in the classic horror period in the golden age of horror in the 1930s and is a must for any serious Universal horror fan. The other was a film that only got a VHS tape release and then I think finally did get a MOD DVD for a brief window that was very expensive. And this one, again, it's a sort of outlier, but it is very much in the Universal horror canon, made in 1935, that is The Mystery of Edwin Drood, based on the unfinished Charles Dickens novel starring the always incredible legendary Claude Rains. And of course, since it's based on an unfinished Dickens novel, that means the actual screenwriters had to come up with their own ending, which some people like, some people don't like. But it's still a wonderful film with great atmosphere. It has a sort of gothic flavor, and it is a period drama. But it does have those classic universal horror isms if you will it has the vibes of a classic golden age period universal horror film even though it is a period dickens adaptation that is obviously trying to cash in on the success that the selznick adaptations of classic novels were having so it is fantastic to finally have this on a blu-ray release again before this point the major releases were the old VHS tape from the early 90s and then a very hard-to-get expensive MOD DVD. This adds a new David DelVal audio commentary plus a trailer gallery. 
and is very inexpensive in the sale, making it a perfect double pairing with Secret of the Blue Room. So these are two more of the much more obscure and harder to come by Universal Horror titles, and they are great items to pick up during the sale where they are dirt cheap. So that is my uh, list of suggestions if you're looking for things to pick up in the Kino Summer Site Sale. Again, they have over 800 titles listed, and... I don't think anybody could possibly keep up with the, the sheer amount and volume of titles they've released, and certainly you can't afford to buy every disc you want. So uh, you wind up, if you're anything like me, you wind up having a, a cart with like $900 worth of Blu-rays in it, and then you have to start whittling down like mad. You think, oh, I'll just add a few $950 in your cart, and then you have to try and get it down to something more manageable, like $50 or $60 to get that free shipping threshold and not actually murder your wallet. So I hope this has helped in trying to focus on titles that I think are very well worth your time and money and also have great audiovisual specs and great supplemental features. So uh, it isn't often that Kino does special features, so I think it is very important to look for those that are from new 4K masters or have better transfer specs or have better special features, making them more enticing over other releases of the same film. So uh, again, I think this is a, a nice selection of the massive amount of discs that are on sale, but is by no means definitive. And of course, I talked about some that I haven't gotten yet and some that I'm looking forward to picking up in this sale myself. So uh, I'm just like the rest of you, everybody else out there, you know, I'm still having to, to, to sort through through and figure out what I can afford and chip away at and the uh, just massive amount of discs that are on sale. So there is something for everyone in this sale with over 800 titles included. And it really is the best means of affording as many Kino titles as you can because this is really the, the cheapest and best option for stocking up on the many multitudes of different Kino Lorber releases. So again, I hope this has been helpful. This is just a, a nice stack of titles that I think are important or uh, nice ideas for if you're looking for titles to pick up during the sale or especially if you're looking for a couple of discs to get you up to that $50 free shipping threshold which sometimes it can be a bit difficult if you're just looking for two or three extra discs and you're sitting there at like $40 or $35 and you're like well I'd like to order something else to then not have to pay for shipping and make it a better deal. So sometimes you sort of are just looking for something different or something out there to add to your cart to get you to that free shipping level. So hopefully this helps. And uh, as always, I try to make these fun and informative and, and uh, I, I try to basically make videos that I myself would want to see. So again, these are just some of my own general thoughts. I hope it's been helpful. And uh, please definitely keep supporting boutique labels and studio labels by buying and spinning physical media releases to help keep physical media alive. And thank you ever so much for watching.